Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and this is a quick demonstration of motor connection diagrams. This lecture operates under the assumption that viewers watch the motor connection diagrams lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. You recall, motor connection diagrams illustrate how to configure a motor as a Y or a delta and whether the motor in question is or is not suitable for dual voltage operation. Manufacturers offer a limited range of three-phase AC motor options, normally restricting themselves to the following six types. Three-lead Y-configured motors, three-lead delta-configured motors, six-lead motors, which can be configured as Ys or deltas, nine-lead Y-configured motors, which can be configured for high or low voltage operation, nine-lead delta-configured motors, which can also be configured for low or high voltage operation, and lastly, 12-lead motors, which can be configured as Ys or deltas for either low or high voltage operation. Six base types effectively gives us 12 different options, with 12-lead motors being the most flexible and, coincidentally, the most expensive. The intention of today's exercise is to read and interpret a couple example motor connection diagrams and set them up for use. Let's take a dip into the box of motors and see what we find. First up is a quarter horsepower Dayton motor with the following motor nameplate information, including a motor connection diagram on the right hand side. It looks like this is a nine lead motor. Judging from the four, five, six connection in the low voltage configuration, this is most likely a nine lead Y configured motor. Let's use an ohm meter to verify this hypothesis. You recall, nine lead Y configured motors consist of six windings, three independent and isolated with both ends accessible, and three permanently bonded together in a Y configuration with only one end of each winding accessible. Windings 1, 4, 2, 5, and 3, 6 can be positioned as needed, whereas windings 7, 8, and 9 are a set of conjoined triplets. Ordinarily, three-phase AC motors are considered balanced loads, and unless damaged, each winding should theoretically have the same resistance. An ohmmeter demonstrates winding 1, 4 has a resistance of roughly 20 ohms. Similarly, an ohmmeter demonstrates winding 2, 5 also has a resistance of roughly 20 ohms. Finally, an ohmmeter demonstrates winding 3.6 also has a resistance of roughly 20 ohms. It looks like the isolated windings are indeed roughly identical. Let's check the fixed configuration of three windings. The central Y connection isn't accessible, so we have to check these windings as paired sets, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, and 9 back to 7. An ohmmeter between terminals 7 and 8 sees winding 7 and 8 in series. The ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 40 ohms, which is consistent with a series combination of two identical 20 ohm windings. Similarly, an ohmmeter between terminals 8 and 9 sees winding 8 and 9 in series. As previously, the ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 40 ohms, which is consistent with a series combination of two identical 20 ohm windings. Finally, an ohmmeter between terminals 9 and 7 sees winding 9 and 7 in series. As previously, the ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 40 ohms, which is again consistent with a series combination of two identical 20 ohm windings. This is indeed a 9 lead Y configured motor. Let's use the connection diagram to set it up in low voltage configuration. The motor connection diagram on the motor nameplate specifies a low voltage YY configuration requires the leads 4, 5, and 6 to be tied together, forming another Y. Then 1 is tied to 7, 2 is tied to 8, and 3 is tied to 9, forming an almost overlapping double Y in parallel with one another. Primary lines L1, L2, and L3 will be connected to conjoined terminals 1, 7, 2, 8, and 3, 9, where swapping any two applied phase sequences would reverse rotational direction. Let's use an ohmmeter to check our work. As presently configured, we have access to the conjoined terminals 1, 7, 2, 8, and 3, 9, where each point of the Y is essentially two identical windings in series in parallel with another two identical windings in series. Point 1, 7 to 2, 8 is winding 1, 4 in series with winding 5, 2, in parallel with winding 7 in series with winding 8. If each of these windings is 20 ohms, each series path is a 40 ohm path. Two 40 ohm paths in parallel is 20 ohms. An ohmmeter between conjoined terminal 1, 7, and 2, 8 does indeed see a resistance of roughly 20 ohms, as we might expect. The same observations can be made about points 2, 8 to 3, 9, and 3, 9 back to 1, 7. An ohmmeter between conjoined terminals 2, 8 and 3, 9 does indeed see a resistance of roughly 20 ohms, as does an ohmmeter between conjoined terminals 3, 9 and 1, 7, as we might expect. I'm reasonably confident we properly wired this 9 lead Y configured motor in the low voltage YY configuration. All right, that wasn't too hard, was it? In summary, follow the motor connection diagram exactly as directed. If you want confirmation of your work, use an ohmmeter to check it. All right, since that demonstration was pretty quick, let's try another example. This time, let's take a look at a 6 lead motor. 
You'll recall six lead motors consist of three individual windings, windings 1-4, winding 2-5, and winding 3-6, isolated from one another with both terminals of each winding externally accessible. When configured as a Y, terminals 4, 5, and 6 are tied together and primary voltage L1, L2, and L3 is connected to terminals 1, 2, and 3, where swapping any two applied phase sequences reverses rotational direction. Alternatively, when configured as a delta, terminal 4 is tied together with 2, 5 is tied together with 3, and 6 is tied together with 1. Primary voltage L1, L2, and L3 is connected to conjoined terminals 1, 6, 2, 4, and 3, 5, where swapping any two applied phase sequences reverses rotational direction. Let's check out this six lead motor. When we pop open the pecker head, yes, this is a real term and I never grow tired of using it. Pecker head, pecker head, pecker head. A pecker head is a motor mounted terminal box. When we pop open the pecker head, out falls a motor connection diagram unlike anything I've featured in the previous lectures. Rather than using the terminal numbers one through six as common in the US, it looks like winding U has ends U1 and U2, winding V has ends V1 and V2, and winding W has ends W1 and W2. This is most likely a motor intended for use in a different country with a functional government and affordable healthcare. Regardless of the terminal identification scheme employed, the motor connection diagram makes perfect sense. To make a Y configuration, ends U2, V2, and W2 are tied together to form a central Y. Primary lines L1, L2, and L3 would be applied to U1, V1, and W1, where swapping any two applied phase sequences would reverse rotational direction. Alternatively, to make a delta configuration, U2 is tied to V1, V2 is tied to W1, and W2 is tied back to U1. Primary lines L1, L2, and L3 would be applied to conjoined terminals U1, W2, V1, U2, and W1, V2, where swapping any two applied phase sequences would reverse rotational direction. As previously, Let's use an ohmmeter to check each winding. Again, normally three-phase AC motors are considered balanced loads, and unless damaged, each winding should theoretically have the same resistance. An ohmmeter demonstrates winding U from U1 to U2 has a resistance of roughly 41 ohms. Similarly, an ohmmeter demonstrates winding V also has a resistance of roughly 41 ohms. And finally, an ohmmeter demonstrates winding W also has a resistance of roughly 41 ohms. Looks like these three windings are indeed roughly identical. Inside the pecker head, we find three voltage clips. Let's use the connection diagram to set the six lead motor up in a Y configuration by tying together U2, V2, and W2. An ohmmeter between terminal U1 and V1 sees winding U and V in series. The ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 82 ohms, which is consistent with the series combination of two identical 41 ohm windings. Similarly, an ohmmeter between terminals V1 and W1 sees winding V and W in series. As previously, the ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 82 ohms, which is consistent with a series combination of two identical 41 ohm windings. Finally, an ohmmeter between terminal W1 and U1 sees winding W and U in series. As previously, the ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 82 ohms, which is again consistent with a series combination of two identical 41 ohm windings. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence we've placed this motor in a Y configuration. Let's do the same thing for a delta. The connection diagram specifies U2 be tied to V1, V2 to W1, and W2 back to U1. An ohmmeter between conjoined terminals U1, W2, and U2, V1 sees winding U in parallel with a series combination of V and W. The ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 28 ohms, which is consistent with a 41 ohm winding in parallel with an 82 ohm series combination of two 41 ohm windings. Similarly, an ohmmeter between conjoined terminals V1, U2, and W1, V2 sees winding V in parallel with a series combination of U and W. The ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 28 ohms, which is consistent with a 41 ohm winding in parallel with an 82 ohm series combination of two 41 ohm windings. Finally, an ohmmeter between conjoined terminals W1, V2, and U1, W2 sees winding W in parallel with a series combination of U and V. The ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 28 ohms, which is again consistent with a 41 ohm winding in parallel with an 82 ohm series combination of two 41 ohm windings. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence we've placed the six lead motor in a delta configuration. All right, that wasn't too hard, was it? In summary, follow the motor connection diagram exactly as directed. If you want confirmation, use an ohmmeter to check your work. I should note that not all motor connection applications are as easy as these examples might imply. 
Each connection diagram was available and correct, and each wire label was present and legible. This is not always the case. Environmental contamination, old age, and just plain stupidity might wipe the numbers off the wires. In later lectures, I'll show you how to determine what wire goes where for unlabeled windings. Ironically enough, this technique necessitates the use of an old school analog voltmeter, something you might have to scrounge for in a thrift store, junkyard, or grandpa's garage. Until then, this concludes this lecture. In conclusion, this lecture took a look at a couple motor connection examples. We set up a 9-lead Y-configured motor in the low-voltage YY configuration, and a 6-lead motor as a Y and again as a delta. Additionally, we use an ohmmeter to check our work. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank you.